To handle ever-increasing paperwork and records, this ship's office accommodates files and working space for four yeomen. However, space limitations here and in other offices require much of the ship's paperwork to be performed and retained in the officers' rooms. The ship's laundry contains a washer, extractor, dryer, and presser, which must be operated on a 24-hour basis to provide weekly laundry services. The ship's sick bay has facilities for routine medical treatment, while the engineering log room adjacent provides office space for the largest department aboard. This, then, is how the crew works. Now let's look at their living spaces. This is the E Division berthing compartment before Reveille. Seventy men with all their personal effects and miscellaneous ship's equipment are accommodated in 800 square feet of area, 11.5 square feet per man. But increases in personnel necessitate the use of cots. Shops and passageways are pressed into use for deck space, and sea bags substitute for lockers, with dubious effects on sanitation and morale. Traffic problems approach a maximum at Reveille. Even the bosun's mate occasionally gets trapped in the narrow passageways. As mentioned earlier, this compartment has 11.5 square feet per man, a reduction of two square feet below the standard of 13.5 prescribed by the Bureau of Ships. Notice what this means in the way of individual privacy and dressing convenience. To this must be added the confusion occasioned by ship's motion, the possible presence of additional foul weather gear whenever adverse weather conditions exist, the ever-present high-level noise from machinery and blowers, and the odors resulting from such confined living. Each transom locker shown accommodates one man, six cubic feet of stowage space for all his personal gear. Every bunk and locker in this space is occupied, despite 10% or more of the crew being continually away at school or on leave. Restricted passageways and ladders add to the difficulties experienced by the crew en route to the washrooms and topside, especially in rough weather. Notice the large locker in the background containing electronic spare parts. This utilizes space which would otherwise be available for personnel lockers or peacoat lockers. This is the passageway at the top of the same ladder shown in the previous scene. All the after-living compartments funnel traffic up through this space into the heads and washroom board or out onto the main deck through the door shown in the background. This crew's head has one urinal per 41 men and one seat per 21 men when all equipment is working. The after crew's washroom has installed one wash basin per 16 men and one shower per 49 men. These figures are very close to Bue ship standards and these two spaces are considered better than average for destroyer types. Even when occupied, the after crew's head is considered large for a destroyer and far superior to the forward crew's head. Normally, the after crew's washroom can accommodate the number of personnel assigned, tattoos and all. However, during periods of maximum utilization, the presence of excessive water vapor indicates the need for improved exhaust ventilation. This space serves two-thirds of the crew and is considerably superior to the forward crew's washroom, which was too small to be photographed. Notice that no provision exists for hanging gear or for drying towels. To increase the available berths, the mess hall also serves as a berthing space for 31 men. Folded mess tables and benches are visible in the foreground, and the storage of clothing and shoes thereon is a common occurrence. Considerable difficulty is experienced in access to the lower bunks. The passageway shown comprises one of the two available routes from all forward berthing spaces to the forward crew's head, which is abaft and one deck above this space. The dual use of this space prevents late hammocks for the mid-watch, since all bunks must be secured for meals. Also, access to lockers is impossible during meal times. In addition to the inaccessibility of the lockers shown, some are unusable due to steam fittings located inside. The ship has a total of 264 lockers for the crew, with the majority being the standard transom locker, shown here. Personnel in excess of this number must use sea bags or share lockers, as 19 are doing at present. 